Good evening and welcome to the Madhouse UK podcast. I'm Steve Tierney. Okay, well this is the one we've been waiting for, or at least some people have been waiting for, which is the uh, the podcast where I talk about how I take a player's dungeon suggestion and turn it into reality. So um, I've got a few different uh, bits to look at actually. I've got, I've got my papers here. And um, all of these, well the dungeons that I've got to look at, they, they're all part of a competition that was run by another player called Paul Malone uh, with his guilds members. And they all kind of wrote up dungeons they thought they'd like to see in the game and sent them to him and he picked his favourites. And uh, I've got a couple that I will definitely be working on. So um, Paul has asked me specifically to do a gentleman called Terry Keitlinger's dungeon, which is called the Secrets of Dracator dungeon. And that's the one that he'd like me to recreate for his Sylvan Alliance guild, which I will be doing. But tonight I'm going to talk about a smaller dungeon because it's a bit easier to focus on and I'm going on holiday in about 24 hours. So... Uh, I've only got limited time. But uh, the dungeon that uh, I'm going to talk about is one that came from Terry Leggio, or Leggio. I'm sorry, Terry, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that surname. But um, it's called The Great Little Dungeon, which uh, yeah, is actually a great little dungeon. It's, it's specifically been designed to be simple to, uh, to implement. Uh, he's obviously thought about the way the game works, and he's thought about what we can and can't do, which is great, because when people try and suggest things that are completely outside of the scope of the game and involve coding, obviously that's much harder to do. So uh, I was just kind of looking through this, and it's a really interesting little dungeon. He's uh, he's gone out of his way to draw a map of the dungeon, which is really helpful. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to exactly do the map that he drew. I won't kind of show you. I don't know how much you can see there, but uh, as you can see, he's he's completely framed the shape of the dungeon, and then there are some little notes and keys for what is going to go where. Now, I'm going to have to change that a bit, and the reason I'm going to have to change it is because otherwise he and anyone he's spoken to, and Paul Malone, I presume, and other players will know what's going to be where. That's not obviously not going to work, so I'll have to switch it around, but certainly I'm going to be using some of these ideas to base the dungeon on. So, the gist of the dungeon is uh, the old trope of a mad doctor, who's been experimenting on various races to see what sort of horrible um, creatures he can create in the past. And uh, somehow the experiments went wrong and they created a race of what, what are basically gremlins. Now gremlins don't exist really in Dungeon World at the moment, so if I'm going to add gremlins, um, I have to just check the trademark of gremlin. <laughs> but uh, if I'm going to have to add gremlin-like creatures to the game, then um, Terry's gone out of his way to say how he thought thinks they should be implemented. And it's good, I'm just looking at them, and he's got his basic gremlin here with 38 health. Um, I would say that's about right for a, for a kind of low level, low to mid level dungeon uh, as a starter monster. He's given them 20 attack, yeah, I'd say that's probably about right. Um, he's given them some bonuses to damage, uh, damage of 1 to 9 plus 3 in some instances. Um, he said what their defences are going to be, uh, which are broadly pretty typical for small races. He's said what, what equipment he'd like them to wear, and that sounds about like what gremlins would have not sure about clubs but um because uh, they're kind of smaller aren't they gremlins my, at least my thinking of gremlins are that they are less like goblins and more like kind of little almost fey creatures little monsters so uh, we'll think about that maybe just their claws will do um or whatever comes to hand i think if you're looking at the original gremlins from the movie and then he's got some kind of upclassed monsters so he's got gremlin hunters which is a tougher gremlin if you like better gremlin the gremlin shaman that um has some has some vague smell, uh, mag spell attacks, magical attacks, and then he's got a gremlin demon, he calls it here, um, which has got better weapons, better equipment, and generally is quite a tough kind of end of level boss type creature. Um, Terry then goes into talking about uh, what rooms will be in the dungeon. He's, he's named a lot of different rooms. There are storage rooms, there's a lab, um, there's a kind of a war room, warrior room, where they do training with training equipment. Uh, there's a skill house, where he's picked some skills he'd like to see in the skill house, uh, are all existing skills, which makes it easier to do. And he's even said what sort of prices he thinks the skills should be, um, should be charged at. And I would say maybe a little expensive, actually. But um, I, I think he's, uh, he's done a good job of thinking about it. Um, and then there are a couple of interesting secret rooms. I won't tell you too much about them because if you're a player and you you go exploring this dungeon, well, you don't want to know everything in advance, do you? But um, what I like about this one, what's good about it is the time he's taken to make sure that the design of the dungeon fits the way the game works. There's nothing in here that doesn't exist somewhere in the game already in a different form. And he's just represented it with some different descriptions and he's written some nice descriptions for some of the areas fairly straightforward for me to implement this and I will be doing so so um, so that gives you an idea of how that works um, 
just looking at it a little bit, um, he talks about things spawning in certain areas. There are different ways I can make things spawn. The most common way that monsters spawn is um, if you are standing near to them, they spawn. So the create what that what happens is that um, if you've got more characters in an area, more monsters spawn because each character has a chance of triggering a spawn or more than one sometimes. Um, but they don't spawn right on top of you because it's absolutely useless if you suddenly attacked by things that weren't there 30 seconds ago. So what they do is they spawn just outside of the range of your vision. So if you can see seven squares away, then they got the, the, the creatures that are supposed to spawn will spawn eight, nine, ten squares away, sometimes on the other side of a wall, uh, so that they're too far away really for you to just encounter them seconds after your game starts. They don't suddenly turn up and you think, where the hell did they come from? Now I know some players are probably screaming at the screen, well that does happen sometimes. Well yes it does, but not because of spawning. Um, monsters can come up and down stairs, so if you're near a staircase they can they can emerge from the staircase as a surprise. They can come through doors, They can some of them can teleport, some of them can summon in other monsters uh, to their location or to a nearby location. Um, there are lots of ways that monsters can summon. And actually, what I'd call the bad spawning method, which is where they spawn right on top of you, there isn't any of that, but there was when, when the game first started, before I learned it was a bad idea, there was some of that, and that mechanic is still in the game, I just don't use it. But it does exist on the first kind of three or four dungeons, so if you're in Central Dungeon, Drax, Mirror Main, you could get some sudden spawning, because it might be left over from the old days, but it's pretty rare. Um, so, so that's how kind of spawning works, and I guess in these instances I would probably use the normal spawning. And he suggested some treasure scattering, he suggested some loot, uh, some lair loot. Uh, players who haven't played before or haven't played for long won't know, but um, there's a type of thing called a lair loot, and when you find it, it helps you towards a kind of grand skill that goes up and up and up levels, as well as finding some treasure. You get, um, you get this kind of skill that makes you a better adventurer, and it's another way to kind of level up if you can find their loots and get to them before anyone else does. They're scattered all over the place. But it's a kind of a later invention for the game. So I think that pretty much covers everything there. I think Terry's done a brilliant job of doing this one. In fact, the other dungeon uh, by Terry Keitlinger, um, much bigger, it's kind of multi-level dungeon, loads to it, lots of descriptions. It's going to take me a long time to implement, but I'm doing that one for the Sylvan Alliance. And I will, I think, after I get back from my holiday, do probably a podcast about that one to show you how I introduced that as well. So that's that. Um, what else have we got today? Well, a um, couple of comments I've had on the uh, on the previous podcast. Uh, one player wrote and said, is that your holiday, sh holiday shirt, Steve? About the shirt that I wore in the last podcast. Um, no, it wasn't my, my shirt. Uh, maybe my dad's shirt, I don't know. Perhaps it wasn't a <laughs> the most fashionable piece of attire anyone's ever seen, but uh, I like it. And then uh, I think a couple of times ago, somebody said, um, be careful where you sit, Steve, because it, it, it shows you're losing your hair. Well, you know, we all we all reach a certain age where <laughs> things start to go wrong, and I am 50, uh, so I don't think I'm doing too bad. But um, I'm not too vain. I don't mind if I if I don't always <laughs> if I don't always look fantastic on the screen. As long as the content is good and you're enjoying watching it, that's the key thing. Anyway, um, I might get time to do another podcast before I go because I've got quite a special one that I want to do uh, but it's whether really I've got time to do it or not at the moment I'm working on getting the turns out tonight and then off I go on holiday and talk to you all when I get back so uh, that's pretty much it for now please don't forget to like this podcast if you had fun um, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and don't forget to ring that magic bell the little bell icon just click it then you'll always know when we're putting out new podcasts and uh, I won't have to remind you that's pretty much it see ya <laughs>